Good morning and welcome to Tableview Methodist Church. If you're listening, I'm just busy setting up the stream and making sure the audio is working properly before I continue. Because last week I went ahead and had to redo. Give me a moment, but it's good to see you. Oh, you're there. I can't see you, but if you're listening, it's good to have you with us for the moment. Testing the sound, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. music playing this morning is uh, various uh, recordings of Bach's organ music. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, good news. It seems that everything's working as it should, and so we can begin with our service. So I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ to our service for this morning here at Tableview Methodist Church. And our scriptures for this morning are Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1 to 6, Psalm 34, 9 to 14, Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 20, and John chapter 6, verse 51 to 58. In John's uh, gospel, we're reading this uh, passage called the Bread of Life Discourse, which is a section of, of John's Gospel where Jesus speaks about being the bread of life and inviting people to eat him. And so there's various uh, interesting poetical, uh, poetic pictures that come through. But I invite us to begin with our words of prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against all people, in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life for the glory of your name. Amen. We pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. 
Amen. As we continue in our worship, I invite us to listen to the words or even to sing them, if you know them, of the Diakolwa or the, um, the creed sung in Isikosa as I invite you to listen and pray and just reflect on, on what we believe as Christian community. Amen. It's beautiful to be able to sing the creed and reflect on what we believe in, to listen to those words, and to remember that the whole world that we live in is, is just painted or threaded together around our understanding of God who is love and God who is exemplified in all the words of that creed. We continue to worship as we listen to the words of Psalm 34. Last week we prayed Psalm 34, verse 1 to 8, where we're invited to look to God and to be radiant, to, to flow and to shine with the love of God in us. Now we continue from verse 8, it's just after it said, Taste and see that the Lord is good. And we continue. I fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Be careful then. <laughs> Amen. We then read from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, 
because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We also read from John chapter 6, verse 51 to 58. Give me a moment. I am the living bread, says Jesus, that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate when they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We pray. Amen. We've had quite a lot to absorb in all of these scriptures that we're reading this morning. And one of the readings that I haven't pointed us to yet is Psalm, is Proverbs chapter 9. And that's quite an important um, scripture for this morning. And I love chapters 8 and 9 of Proverbs because they speak about the role of wisdom in creation and the capacity for us as humans to choose wisdom. So now hopefully I'll be able to show you my Bible in front of me from, from Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1 to 8. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars she has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity, and live and walk in the way of insight. I love this invitation from wisdom. Beginning with verse 9, and we'll look at that just now. See this invitation, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. And so as we hear those words, we think of what we've just read in John chapter 6, verse 51 to 58, as Jesus invites us to come and eat his bread and we remember that he invites us to drink his blood. Wisdom also invites us to a feast. And so we realize that part of what Jesus is doing here is inviting us to participate in his wisdom, to participate in the godly wisdom that put the whole world together. And so the, the writer of Proverbs continues, lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. In Proverbs, there's two invitations going on all the time. The invitation of wisdom and the invitation of folly. The invitation of folly is expressed quite differently. 
loud, ignorant, knowing nothing, calling out, you who are simple, turn in here, and saying, stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. <coughs> Excuse me. But do thou not know that the dead are there, that her guests are there in the, the depths of shell? So we have this picture that is presented in Proverbs of being able to choose between Lady Wisdom, who is uh, organized and ordered and uh, preparing a feast for, for all people, and Folly, who kind of runs a tavern on the side of the road. What I found interesting was this, this uh, phrase, she has hewn her seven pillars. And, you know, whenever you see a, uh, something like that, you wonder what does the seven mean and what's going on here. But you remember that in Genesis chapter 1, there are the seven days of creation. And the number seven becomes a motif in, in all of Scripture for fullness and, and, um, and completeness. But it is also uh, a picture of a kind of temple with seven pillars. It would be a good number of pillars to hold up the temple. And many people see in the poetry of Genesis 1 the idea of God building a temple, a temple in which... God will be worshipped for all of us to, to worship in, and that would be the creation that we live in. And that takes us back to Proverbs chapter 8, which is just such a beautiful picture of wisdom and God working together to, to form the world, to make things what they are today. And so from verse 22 of Proverbs chapter 8, the Lord brought me forth the Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths I was brought forth, and there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. In verse 30, Then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Such a beautiful picture of wisdom, of joy in creation, and the idea of wisdom as being at the, at the root, at the foundation of creation. As the wisdom says, as Proverbs said, wisdom has built her house, she has hewn her seven pillars. And so in all of these pictures, we're presented with the invitation to taste and see that God is good. To come and enjoy the feast that God has prepared for us. As the psalmist says, Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? This fear of the Lord, this respect for the world that we live in and, and the idea that God has created all things should give us a sense of of God's presence in everything and should give us a sense of, of the availability of God's wisdom to us. Now the picture of God's wisdom is that we can come and receive it, but it's not necessarily that easy to receive, to participate. In John chapter 6, what happens is many people walk away because of the difficult thing that Jesus is saying in this metaphor of saying that whoever eats uh, me, Jesus, uh, will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh, as Jesus continues to say. This is not an easy teaching. And people say, how can this man give us his flesh to eat, etc. But the, the thing that's happening is God is inviting, inviting people to participate in his life. Jesus is inviting us to come and, to come and enjoy what what he has done and to live the way that he has taught us to live. 
And so we choose this wisdom way of life as we literally eat Jesus into our lives and become part of him. And so the early church and communion was a controversial thing because people thought it was a bit odd that they would eat flesh and drink wine. But it was an expression of the deepest intimacy, the, the closeness of Christians with Jesus and being part of Jesus' body, being part of Jesus' hands, feet in the world and living the way of love and grace and all of those things. As we think about what we read in Proverbs chapter 9 about wisdom building your house and thinking that all creation is governed by these laws of wisdom, we realize that these laws of wisdom don't just exist for the sake of um, keeping the sea in its place with gravity and keeping the mountains as high as they are and, and ensuring that life is able to exist in such a complicated and magnificent planet and making sure that there's fundamental laws of physics that make things work, but also laws of morality and joy and love that seem to be woven in to the fabric of, of being, of being alive, of, of being who we are. And at the moment, I think we're missing out on a lot of wisdom, if you would call it that, because we're not able to be together and share together. I was thinking when I picked up my children with staggered schooling and avoiding everybody because of social distancing that I don't get to get wisdom from the people I meet in the in the road anymore. I always enjoy chatting to people as I fetch my kids from school in the morning or, what it, or in the afternoon or drop them off in the morning. But at the moment, everything's a bit isolated. We get a little too much foolish wisdom, I think, from from our social media and our TV, which is just that that maybe that easy wisdom that the the Proverbs uh, offers us, you know, the foolish wisdom. The foolish woman is loud, ignorant, and knowing nothing. This is, remember, this is not against women. There's two women, and, and in Proverbs it's about a a son choosing a good wife and the good wife should be wisdom but he can also choose foolishness and the foolish one is saying come in here come and eat the stolen water get the get the bread eaten in secret that ability to absorb knowledge without actually thinking about it versus wisdom's feast which is a much more sophisticated feast that says come eat of the bread drink of the wine i've mixed lay aside immaturity and live so our invitation today is to think about where we get our wisdom, and to lay aside our immaturity and learn to live our lives to the fullest and in God's presence. Amen. I invite us to pray. We praise you, God, for the world which you created and for our place in it. You have given us life that we may love and serve you, and though we have resisted your purpose and misused your gift, you have not left us in our sin, but have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. We thank you that for us he became human, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. There he reigns in glory, and there he prays for us, and we believe that he will be our judge. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to bring us to a new life in Christ, and give us freedom to call you Father. Take a moment to pay attention to giving thanks. Therefore, with all the church on earth and in heaven, we give you our thanks and praise. We dedicate ourselves to you. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to do your will and bring us with all people to your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray for each other before we sing a closing hymn, Kosi Sitlangene, our benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Cool.
Yeah. 